Several months ago, I started developing K, an AI chatbot whose job is to know everything about my smart home and assist my family. Using GPT, K evolved rapidly to the point where it could suggest code and commands to run my smart home. So what if I took off the guardrails and gave K access to influence my automations? What if I gave K autonomy over my smart home? Well, I guess I'll find out. This is a 10 minute warning. What's the text? Lock up for me, please. What's good, enthusiasts? This will be the last video in this automation series, or at least until I stumble across something a little bit more epic. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how I gave GPT control over my house and why I had to shut it down. Spoiler alert, things were getting a bit chaotic. This video will be a little different from the other videos in this series, as I won't go into detail about the individual automations, but if you feel that these automations deserve a deep dive, let me know in the comments. For those of you seeing me for the first time, welcome. And for those of you seeing this video out of context, so before the other three videos, uh, go check those out. You can see them in this playlist here. Okay, so how did we get here? Now, the goal was to create an AI virtual assistant in the form of a chatbot to control our smart home. Now, mine is called K and I access it through Telegram. And I pretty much showed you guys how to do the same too as well. Now, in the first video, I showed you how to set up Telegram to talk with Home Assistant. In the second video, we connected GPT to Home Assistant and was able to ask it questions through Telegram about our smart home. Now, in the third video, we learned how to give our chatbot the ability to influence changes in our smart home by giving GPT clever commands that Home Assistant could interpret. And now, here we are, the fourth video. Maybe the last. This is where I take off the training wheels and give GPT the ability to make decisions without being checked. Now, was this really a crazy thing to do? Maybe. Hmm. Is this the beginning of Skynet or iRobot? Perhaps. Was it fun? You damn straight it was. Within the first few hours of giving K autonomy, I had to shut it down and here's what happened. When I created K, it relied heavily on natural language processing and machine learning to understand the intent behind what I say. Now, I didn't want to use the YAML files defined to define my intent the way that Home Assistant prescribes. I felt that the YAML files were a bit too prescriptive and rigid. They work, like I think they're a good idea, but I really wanted K to be very user-friendly from the, from the aspect where uh, anyone could start interacting with K without having to to know any special command. I want people to just simply start talking to it and it just works. To code something like this, it's rather complex and it can get very tedious and to be honest, it's very fragile. And I started to discover that like the more automations I would give K to learn, the more it would become confused. When GPT became an option, this leveled up K's ability like a lot. Uh, 
with straightforward commands like you know turn on lights or do this or that it worked flawlessly like no matter how i worded it no matter how i said it like i didn't like any variation it just understood and gpt enabled cave to perform tasks that i didn't even have to write code for which was fantastic it was even able to answer questions and answering questions is not something you can really code for that easily like it's almost like having google right in telegram like it was it's amazing and as a result i no longer needed the complicated code or machine learning like i only needed gpt and everything worked well at first but i still needed to test it against like interpreting all of the intents because right now it just worked with like straight commands and i can ask questions but i want it to understand intent so for example if i were to say things like oh it's hot in the master bedroom then i would expect k to like turn on the fan or like turn down the ac additionally i, I didn't also want to write out like all of these kitschy phrases um to tell the virtual assistant how to do like for instance, to make the room colder. I, I just needed to just know. Okay, so after several attempts, right, of creating this, let's call it an intent resolution engine uh, using GPT, like I managed to get it to work after a few weeks. At a high level, here's how this works. When a message gets sent into K, it would first check to see if it was in the middle of handling an intent. Now, if the answer is yes, then it would simply jump back to where that intent last left off. Otherwise, it would basically go for processing. In the processing process, or while processing the message, uh, GPT is asked two questions. Uh, the first question is, which one of the lists, which one of these items in the list of intents matches a given prompt? And the second question is, does the given prompt relate to a home or building? Now, the first question basically determines a probable intent, while the second protects against, let's say, false positives. The next part of this process splits into two. If I find an intent, or if K finds an intent, then, and the context is also relating to a house or a building, then it would run that particular intent. In earlier iterations, when I was using machine learning, I added like a confirmation system here as a guardrail since the machine learning would sometimes get the intent wrong. So I left this logic here to prevent GPT from getting a bit frisky with my smart home. And this is an important detail, so I'm gonna come back to this, so remember that. So if no intent were were found, then uh, basically it meant that we were given a vague command or some kind of question, and this section handles both of those. So there are other tricks to the system, such as how I register intents, how I still use NLP to capture various contextual information, and how I enable automations to have like a conversation to gather said contextual information. Bottom line, right, this worked, or so I thought. I kind of decided to add all of the intents that I previously made, um, just to see if it could handle it. Spoiler alert, it, it could not. The more intents that I registered and gave to K, even though it was using GPT, the more spotty the results would become. And to be honest, like it was more reliable when I was using machine learning than with GPT. So I found that kind of surprising and it was a bit disappointing. Before I gave up, <laughs> I was looking at the logs just to see what went wrong and maybe it was something that I could fix quickly. Um, and I noticed something peculiar. Now, when I gave Kay a phrase or a sentence, I expected it to return one of the matching intents, right? Because remember, I gave it a list of intents and out of the list of intents, the first question basically is asking it, give me back a matching intent based off of my prompt. Instead of giving me back the list of intents, what I find in the logs is that Kay was giving me its own intent. Here's an example of what I mean. I have an automation called the departure timer, and it does a few things, but one of which it's basically to keep me on track for leaving the house as I can get time blindness. And the intent is listed as followed. Set a departure timer because I need to leave. Now, the way the intent resolution system is set up is that this phrase would be listed as an intent for GPT to pick from. If GPT received the prompt, for instance, I have to leave soon, it should be able to match the departure timer intent to that particular phrase. Instead, what I found is that GPT would say that the intent is to leave. And since GPT has a list of all of the commands and entities, it would tell me that I should turn off the lights before I go, and it listed the lights to turn off, as well as gave me the turn off command. That's creepy, that's terrifying. But that's 
awesome at the same time. Like, this was a very exciting discovery. I wanted a system that could interpret intents, but I never actually considered it could interpret other valid intents besides the one that I give it. Like, think about it, right? If I gave five people a large list of entities and data, their states, and a whole bunch of commands and intents, and then I tell them, here's a vague command, find me the intent that matches this, then out of those five people, I may get five different answers because as rational minds, we can rationalize a reason why this intent should be valid. And since GPT is trained against literally all of humanity, uh, then realistically, it does the same. Sometimes when I ran it, it gave me the intent I was looking for, but other times it gave me alternative actions that were technically valid. What GPT has done, it's given K a mind of its own. Seeing that it has a mind of its own, I decided to give it access to all of my smart home devices, all of the commands, because what could go wrong, right? I just wanted to see what would happen if I gave it access to everything. I also wanted to see what would it feel like if Kay had like true autonomy over my house? Like if it had the ability to do whatever, just what would it do with no checks and balances? I was curious. So I removed all of the checks. Remember the one I mentioned earlier where it had to basically ask me what to do? Like. I removed it. I just said that, hey, if I ask you a question or I give you a command, just do what you feel is best. And you know what happened? When I told Kay, hey, I need to leave, it would remind me to close the windows. Uh, when I told, said to Kay, it's dark, it would turn on the lights. If I told Kay, I didn't feel safe, uh, it would then set the alarm. Like this looked extremely promising. To be honest, this feels very close to what many envision a smart home should be like. Conversational, attentive, capable, pretty much a good human. But this joy was short-lived. Remember when I mentioned the example of about giving the five people like a whole bunch of data and then asking them questions and getting five different answers back? Well, GPT is trained off of billions of data points from many people and some of those people are wrong. You're gonna get wrong answers. Some people can just plainly be wrong. So though GPT can come to the correct conclusion about an intent, uh, its execution and follow through becomes a bit sketchy, especially when context is needed. So for example, right? If I were to say it's dark, sometimes it would randomly choose a light to turn on and it would do so at one example in my daughter's bedroom while she's sleeping in the middle of the night. Unacceptable. When I say things like I'm hot, sometimes it would make up an AC entity that doesn't exist in my house and it would try to turn that on. Really weird and really creepy it made me wonder like what is actually in my house. At the core of all of this, like the biggest problem that I find is that I just don't know how GPT will respond. Case in point, when I told it I want to eat a PB&J sandwich, it then told me that's a great idea. And then it tried to turn on the living room lights, which technically makes sense, like it makes sense, but I wasn't in a living room, I'm in the kitchen, and I, it, it, that wasn't necessary, like I didn't need the lights to be turned on. And, and it just did, right, because the gloves are off, like there's no, there's, there's nothing stopping it, it just did it. As much as we like technology, what humans love more is control and predictability. We're afraid of wild beasts with fangs, claws, and venom because we don't know how wild animals will react. To us, like the untrained, right, we can't risk our safety because it's it's difficult to protect against something that's unpredictable. And based off of some comments that I've seen in conversations around the internet and in forums, AI seems to be no different than an unpredictable beast. It's one thing to lock GPT behind a metaphorical glass cage of a fun website or a silly app where we can enjoy it in a safe and controlled environment. But when we remove it from this metaphorical cage and we set it free and it has access to the things that you care about, to the things that make you safe, it scares us because we don't know what it will do. 
And I find that those of us who work on the front lines of tech or those of us who are tech enthusiasts and love exploring technology, we tend to be more inclined to venture down these unpredictable roads and these paths and take these type of risks. Similar to let's say how a trained zookeeper is able to mitigate the risk of working with wild animals. But still the danger is there, the uncertainty is always there. Essentially, with all of that being said, I had to disable the nodes or the parts of the automations that were responsible for the GPT or K capable of doing things like I disabled that and I had to re-enable the guard roles that I mentioned from before. I, I did not want Kay annoying my family with its spontaneous uh, actions. I also realized that the initial guard role that I mentioned from earlier forced GPT to ask permission but it also provided a great protection in the sense that it allowed me to see the intent of what it wanted to do before doing it and i could prevent it from doing like the wrong things i think that's something that maybe in the future if 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 ai gets to a point where it is this autonomous we would need that type of check and balance to ensure that it doesn't go off the rails and just do weird things also, now that I'm thinking about it, keep in mind that GPT doesn't know friend from foe. And depending on the access that you give GPT, so if it's able to access like your lights, your locks, and all of these other things, like a bad actor could come in and basically tell GPT to do something. And if there's no checks and balances, it'll just do it. And now they have access or can wreak havoc to your life. <sighs> However, knowing all this, this doesn't mean I give up. And to be honest, it's kind of exciting and it kind of hypes me up. Everything that you saw at the beginning of this video is real. And in terms of the automations and all of these automations I have working more or less. And what I can say is that each of those automations that you saw uh, were either interpreted by or influenced by GPT in some capacity. So if you are interested in knowing more or deep diving, uh, let me know in the comments and I can create a separate video to kind of dive deep into all of that. I would like to go over that in this video, but again, these automations are really complicated and there's a lot that went into making it work. So I want to make sure that I do it justice. And I felt like this information here would be more interesting and beneficial to you guys than the automations themselves, because again, GPT is a bit sketchy <laughs> when you give it all of this autonomy. So I didn't want to just throw it out there willy nilly for you guys. If you do like this video, consider subscribing. I have lots of other ideas and interesting experiments that I want to try out. And if you're watching this, I suspect you may be into this stuff too. Nerds Unite. Also, um, I have a link in the description where you can buy me coffee if you feel impressed to show additional support. I make these videos as a way to release a lot of these pent up ideas that goes floating through my mind, but I also want it to be engaging and worthy of your time and your support and feedback does help me align our interests. Okay, so uh, with all of that said, class dismissed. Mm -hmm.